I've purchased and tested dozens of accessories for dozens of hours, so I could bring you guys this list of 40 of the most useful accessories for the Galaxy S23 Ultra or any other Samsung S series, Fold series, or Flip series device. And as always, none of this is sponsored. There are time codes down below, and I'll have links to every product in the description and pinned comment. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you how to get a limited time deal for 25% off any Samsung flagship phone, as well as massive discounts on some of the accessories shown in this video. Let's get started. This is the Grip Tight One Micro Stand, and it's the smallest, most feature packed smartphone tripod I could find. It has a ball head, so you can still get perfectly level shots on uneven surfaces, and it folds flat to easily fit in your pocket. I've been recommending this tripod for over five years because I still haven't been able to find a better one. If you're looking for a great case, I've been primarily using the Spigen Zero One case because it's plenty protective with its raised bezels on the front, and the back is thick enough to protect the cameras while still being thin enough to support fast wireless charging as well as wireless power share if you need to charge your watch or wireless earbuds on the go. The sides of the case are also a bit grippy, making it easier to hold onto, and the design just looks awesome. This is the only case I've ever had where people comment on how cool and unique it looks. And in case you're wondering, this ring on the back is an ESR MagSafe ring that makes the S23 Ultra compatible with all MagSafe accessories. This can be installed on the back of most cases, like I have here, or directly on the back of the phone if you're not going to use a case. Once it's installed, you'll be able to use MagSafe accessories like this ESR Halo Lock Kickstand Wireless Charger. This can fast wireless charge your phone and has a friction style kickstand so you can prop your phone up at just about any angle while it's charging. It works great in landscape mode and can technically work in a portrait mode, but at a very steep angle. The kickstand can also fold back in so you can lay your phone flat or just make the charger easier to travel with. You could also use this basis fast wireless charging battery pack which can charge a second device at the same time using the USB-C port. But when you're charging two devices like this, it reduces the wireless charging speed to five watts. The ring also allows you to use MagSafe car mounts like this fast wireless charging ESR mount that has a built-in fan to keep your phone cool while it charges. This one has a rotating clip, which allows you to mount to both vertical and horizontal air conditioning vents. There's also a stabilizer pad at the bottom for added stability. There's a USB-C port at the bottom, and it comes with the required USB-C cable, but no charger. You can also slap on MagSafe wallets. My favorites are the Moft and ESR wallets. If you want the slimmest wallet that can double as a kickstand, I'd go with the Moft wallet. This can hold three cards easily, but when you add more, it gets notably harder to pull out a specific card. And if you pull on this hourglass shape, it pops out so you can stand your phone up in either portrait or landscape mode. The ESR wallet is a great option if you want more card capacity. There's a slot for a single card on the back, and there's a cutout at the bottom to help you push the card out when you need it. You can then fit up to three more cards on the inside pocket, and there's even a slot with a window on the other side for an ID, allowing you to carry up to five cards. This wallet also has an alignment magnet to keep it aligned with the ESR ring so it doesn't rotate freely on the back of your phone. And since this wallet uses a friction hinge, it can easily open up to any angle and prop up your phone in either portrait or landscape modes. Both of these wallets look like they obscure one of the cameras, but since this is the 10 times zoom camera, the wallets never actually block your pictures. A couple more MagSafe accessories I love are these two foldable ring holders. The longer one doubles as a stand that easily works in portrait and landscape modes, and can be used as a camera stand to make it easier to get group photos. The second option has a more comfortable ring if you just want to have a better grip on your phone, and it can also be extended to stand your phone up in portrait or landscape orientations. You can even adjust these rings to set your phone up like a tripod to get a group picture. Just make sure you don't tilt the phone too far back or the phone itself will tip over. And if you don't want to use the ESR ring on your case, you can just get a dedicated MagSafe case for your phone like this Torres O-Stand case. Not only does this add a MagSafe ring, but the ring also pops out on a friction hinge so you can stand your phone up in either portrait or landscape orientations. And of course, like any good case, this offers raised bezels on the back to protect your cameras, as well as raised bezels on the front to protect it from face down drops. And the buttons are very tactile and easy to press. However, this one isn't quite as grippy as the Spigen case. And in case you're wondering, the ESR ring itself does not affect the S Pen, even if it's attached directly to the back of the phone. And none of the MagSafe accessories in this video impact the S Pen either. After years of testing terrible 3-in-1 chargers and never being able to recommend a single one of them to you guys because they're all just trash, 
I finally have four three-in-one chargers that are excellent for different use cases. Let's start with the best wireless charger for a nightstand. And that would be this three-in-one charger by LK. It can fast charge your phone, supports both portrait and landscape charging modes, has three LED indicators at the bottom so you know when you're lined up properly for charging, and the LEDs turn off when your device is finished charging, with the exception of the LED for the earbuds. What sets this charger apart is the Galaxy Watch Charger. Not only does it have a magnet and a rubber cradle to make sure your watch stays lined up to avoid overheating, but you can also unplug it and use the watch charger separately with any 5 watt or greater USB-C charging port, including the one on your laptop or even a Samsung tablet. And the magnet holds so well that even when the cradle's upside down, you don't have to worry about your watch falling off while charging. And in case you're wondering, this charger comes with an 18 watt power adapter and supports a wide variety of earbuds and phones, but the watch charger only supports Samsung watches. If you need something more compact, I'd go with this LK 3-in-1 charger instead because the watch and earbuds sit directly behind the phone charger. This one also comes with an 18 watt power adapter, supports fast wireless charging in both portrait and landscape modes, but has a downward facing LED bar that illuminates your nightstand instead of shining the light towards you. The left side of the bar turns green when you charge your phone, and the right side turns green when you charge your earbuds. Unfortunately, both sides just stay green even after your devices are charged. The watch charger doesn't have an LED that turns on, but Samsung's watches show their charge percentage on the screen while they charge, so you can just glance at your watch to see the charge status. And speaking of the watch charger, this one also has a magnet and disconnects with a USB-C connector and can be plugged into other devices to charge as well, but this one is reversible. If you flip it over, you can also charge Apple Watches, which makes this an excellent choice for families who have both Samsung and Apple devices. If you want a 3-in-1 charger for traveling, I'd get one of these folding chargers. Both of these come with 18 watt power adapters, support fast wireless charging for your phone, and have green and blue LEDs to let you know when your phone is charging. Pulsing blue means your phone is charging, solid blue means it's fully charged, and green means there's nothing on the charger. Both of these also have a button to disable the charging LEDs if you want to turn those off. And there are no LEDs for either the earbuds or watch charging pads. And in case you're wondering, you can charge a second phone on the earbuds charging pad, but only at standard wireless charge speeds. This trifold charger is the most compact when folded, but requires you to lay your devices flat on the charger, with the exception of the watch charger which can be lifted up for angled charging. While this second option takes up more space in the folded position, its ability to unfold like a traditional desk charger may suit your needs better. And in case you're wondering, both of these can charge your phone in the closed position, and both can charge a wide variety of phones and earbuds, but the watch chargers only support Samsung watches. If you want to fast charge two phones and a Galaxy Watch at the same time, I'd get Samsung's official wireless charger trio. This is the charger I'm currently using on my desk. It has multiple charge points for easy alignment, and has three LEDs that are red when a device is charging, and green when the device is fully charged. And in case you're wondering, the watch charger only supports Samsung watches. One important thing to know about all flat Galaxy Watch chargers is that any watch band that doesn't allow the watch to sit flat on a table will prevent it from working on a flat wireless charger. So if you have a band like this magnetic debuckle, I recommend getting a charging stand like one of these. You just insert the charging puck that came with your watch and you're good to go. And depending on which Galaxy Watch charging puck you have, you'll need a different version of this stand, so I'll leave a link to both types in the description. If you want the fastest possible wireless charger that can also control all of your smart devices, you can get Samsung's SmartThings Station. Not only does this support 15 watt fast wireless charging and have a fan to cool your phone while it's charging, but it can also control smart devices in your home just by putting the phone on the charger or pressing, double pressing, or long pressing the button on top. This means you can automatically turn off your lights and lock your smart door locks whenever you put your phone on the charger after a specific time and leave it on the charger for a custom amount of time. Then you can have your coffee maker start automatically when you take your phone off the charger in the morning. And you can set that to only happen on Monday through Friday and only if you take your phone off the charger in a specific time frame in the morning so you don't accidentally start your coffee when you just need to check the time in the middle of the night. The button can also control any function from turning on or off lights or even do super custom things like send somebody a text. 
If you prefer wired charging, I've got some incredibly useful options. But first, if you want the fastest charging, you'll need a 100 watt certified cable. The cables that came with your Samsung products are not 100 watt certified, so I'll leave a link in the description and pinned comment to some good options if you need one. These first two chargers are the slimmest I could find. These are great to use on kitchen countertops or for traveling. Both support up to 65 watt charging with their USB-C port, but Samsung limits charging to 45 watts for their flagship phones and tablets. But the 65 watt capability still works great for laptops. The basis charger's second port is a 20 watt standard USB-A port for those that need it. But if you plug into both ports, you'll get a max of 45 watts on the USB-C port and 20 watts on the USB-A port. And the Sancton charger has two USB-C ports, both capable of 65 watts if you plug in only one device, or if you plug in two devices, you'll get a max of 45 watts from the orange port and 18 watts from the gray port. And the prongs on both of these chargers fold away for easy traveling. If you just want the most compact 45 watt travel charger for your phone, then Anker's 45 watt option is gonna be your best bet. This is notably smaller than Samsung's own 45 watt charger, and the prongs fold in to make it even more compact. If you want the most power on the go in the smallest form factor, then check out Anker's Prime 100 watt three port charger. This will give you up to 100 watts out of either USB-C port and up to 22.5 watts out of the USB-A port. If you plug in multiple devices, the 100 watts will be split up between the three ports. And if three ports isn't enough, you can get the 100 watt Ugreen charger, which adds an extra USB-C port. However, this charger is notably bigger than the Anker charger. And while it can charge laptops at 100 watts, it can only charge your Samsung devices at 25 watts instead of the 45 watts that Samsung's flagship devices are capable of. If you're okay with that, this is an excellent option. One important thing to know about all these high power compact chargers is that they will get very hot when using them at their max power output for an extended period of time. You won't burn yourself by touching them, but they do get pretty toasty. This is true of all high power chargers in this form factor, but all the chargers in this video are from well-established brands with plenty of safety circuitry that prevents them from overheating and becoming dangerous. I can't believe this hyper-fast charger only cost me three bucks. This will have my phone charged and Don't buy cheap chargers. If you're just looking for the best charging station to keep on your desk, the Ugreen 200 watt charger is what I've switched to this past year because of the massive amounts of both power and ports. You get four USB-C ports and two USB-A ports. The top two ports can each charge a device at 100 watts at the same time. And if you plug in more devices, it starts to intelligently divvy up the power depending on which device needs it the most. And it even comes with a 100 watt rated cable, which you'll need to get the max charge speeds. The two downsides with this charger are that it only supports 25 watt charging for Samsung devices, and since it intelligently divvies up the power, if you plug in something that draws a lot of power, it'll stop powering the other ports for a moment and redistribute the power based on what needs it the most. So if you're plugging something in and you wanna make sure that it never loses power, just plug it into the leftmost USB-C port. This is one of the most unique chargers I've ever seen. Not only can you plug it into a wall and use it like a traditional 65 watt charger, but you can also fold the prongs in and use its internal 10,000 milliamp hour battery to fast charge your Samsung devices on the go. And there's a button towards the top that shows you how much charge you have left when you press it. Unfortunately, it only supports 25 watt charging for Samsung devices and the 65 watt rating drops to 30 watts when you're just using the internal battery. But it's still an incredible travel charger that was super useful on a recent business trip I took. So much so that this is now the charger I'll be bringing with me on future business trips. This particular model is the special edition Optimus Prime version, but Anchor also sells it in black and gold-ish if you prefer. Did you know that all of Samsung's flagship smartphones with the exception of the Z Flip series can be used as full-blown desktop computers, complete with a desktop for shortcuts and folders, floating windows, desktop versions of Microsoft Office apps, a desktop style web browser, a file browser with drag and drop support, and even support for game controllers so you can play your games on a big screen. All you need to do this is a USB-C to HDMI adapter or a USB-C to USB-C monitor cable and a monitor or TV that supports either HDMI or USB-C input. Just plug one end into your phone and the other end into a monitor or TV and DeX will start automatically. And while your phone can double as a trackpad and keyboard when you're using DeX, you can also connect any Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. 
And if you want the most compact option for traveling, the choice is easy. It's this foldable keyboard and trackpad combo from iClever. It can connect to three devices, turns on and off automatically when you open and close it, has tactile buttons, and a responsive trackpad with gesture and click support. Though it also has physical left and right click buttons if you prefer. And it even comes with a compact folding stand for your phone. So if you ever need to use DeX on the go, this is a must have accessory. If you wanna take DeX to the next level, then I recommend this higher cool USB-C hub. It supports power pass-through so you can fast charge your phone while it's in DeX mode. It has three USB 3.0 ports for connecting external drives or an RF style keyboard and mouse, a 4K capable HDMI output port to connect to your monitor, an SD card and micro SD card reader, and a gigabit ethernet port if you want a fast and reliable internet connection when using DeX. You could also use DeX wirelessly with any TV or monitor that supports Miracast, which is most modern TVs, but not that many monitors. If you do want to wirelessly connect to a monitor, you can get this Miracast adapter from Microsoft, which lets you wirelessly stream DeX to any monitor with an HDMI input. But the downside with wireless connections is that it adds some latency, which just means you won't be able to play games competitively. So if you're not gaming, you likely won't even notice. If you have a dash cam, trail cam, any action camera, or just like to have access to lots of movies without taking up space on your phone, then this incredibly compact micro SD card reader from Ugreen is for you. The micro SD card just slides in the back, then you plug the USB-C side right into your phone. Now, if you're ever in an accident, you can quickly take out the dash cam's micro SD card and show the crash footage to the police. Or you can quickly check your trail cam footage with just your phone, edit your GoPro footage on site, or just bring a bunch of movies with you on a long flight. And as a bonus, the connector sticks out far enough to even work with cases on, which is not true of every micro SD card reader. If you're looking for the best car mount, I've got a few options depending on what you need. The IATI AutoSense wireless mount is the most feature-packed option that supports fast wireless charging and automatically opens when you bring your phone close and closes when you place your phone into the cradle. To release the phone, just press either one of the side buttons. And these are physical buttons instead of touch sensitive buttons, so you don't need to worry about accidentally opening the cradle when you just want to adjust your phone. This mount can also flip around, rotate, and extend, and the bottom cradle can easily be adjusted for different phone sizes. It comes with a car charger adapter, and it even has a secondary 5 watt charge port that can be used at the same time. 5 watts isn't terribly fast for a secondary charger, but it's great that you don't have to buy your own. You also get these reflective stickers with the mount that you can stick on the back of your phone in case the sensor has a hard time seeing your phone. This can occasionally happen if you have a super dark case on, but the sensor didn't have any issues seeing any of the black cases I have, so you're probably not going to need this. Regardless, it's nice that they included it just in case. The adhesive pad holds on great to windshields, but if you want to mount it to your dash, you'll likely want to use the mounting pad that comes in the box. Just wipe your dash clean, peel the red sticker, Press the pad firmly onto your dash, then wait 15 to 30 minutes for the pad to adhere to your dash before putting your mount on. And if the suction pad ever gets dirty from taking it on or off a bunch of times, you can just rinse it off in the sink, let it air dry, then you're good to use it again. You can get this mount in a dashboard or windshield version, which is what I have here, a CD player and air vent version, or a cup holder version depending on your mounting needs. If you want to save a bit of cash and don't mind losing the auto open and close feature, you can get the IATI One Touch Wireless 2 mount, which also comes with the car charger adapter and has the same features, but uses a button to automatically close the arms when you press the phone into the cradle. To get your phone out, you just have to press in these two wings on the side. The only other difference is that the bottom cradle adjusts with a push button instead of a nut. Other than that, these two options are identical. If you don't care for wireless charging because you're always plugged in for Android Auto, then I'd go with the IATI One Touch 6. This is a much less expensive mount that's functionally the same as the One Touch Wireless 2 mount, just without the wireless charging. But it does add a rotating cable gripper on the back so you can always have quick access to your USB-C cable for Android Auto. And you just need to pull on it to extend it instead of loosening a nut like on the AutoSense mount. And the same is true for the bottom cradle, which pulls out to four extra positions. IATI also has a screen mounted option that has the same cradle as the One Touch 6, but it uses an adhesive pad to mount to the back of your car's screen instead. There's also an adjustment wheel that you could loosen to move the cradle up or down so you can get your phone in the perfect position. And it even comes with a spare adhesive pad if you ever need to switch cars. If you use Android Auto and don't like having to plug a cable in every single time, or you just don't like wireless charging and you want an easier way to plug your phone in, 
then you'll love this magnetic USB-C cable. This is a two-part cable, and this little nub just plugs into your phone and stays there. Then, when you're ready to plug in, just bring the cable close to the connector, and it'll snap right into place. I've tested this with Android Auto for a while now, and I haven't had any disconnection issues. As you can see, I'm shaking this around a lot, and that's staying solidly connected. This cable also supports fast charging up to 15 watts and is reversible. But you should know that not all magnetic USB-C cables are created equal, and most of them won't hold on strong enough for Android Auto. Of the four or five different versions I've tried, this is the one that held on the best, and this is the one I'll have linked in the description and pinned comment. If you want the best car charger to not only fast charge your phone, but also charge your laptop at 100 watts, I'd get the Basis 160 watt car charger. That's right, 160 watts. The top port can charge devices at up to 100 watts, and the bottom two ports can charge devices at up to 30 watts each, all at the same time. And it even comes with a 100 watt rated cable, which you'll need to get the max charge speeds. The build quality is great, and it has a blue ring that illuminates to let you know that it's plugged all the way in. Something important to know about this charger is that not every car supports 160 watts through their 12 volt port. So you'll have to check your car's port to see if it supports at least 160 watts. If it's not written on your port, you should be able to find that information in your manual. The only downside with this charger is that it's pretty beefy, coming in at 1 and 5 eighths inches across the face of it. If you want something that's more compact and don't mind losing some power, you can check out the Mananam 73 watt charger. While this won't be able to charge a laptop at 100 watts, the USB-C port can still charge your Samsung phone or tablet at their max charge speeds, while also charging a second device at up to 18 watts. Mananam also has a 138 watt version that's only slightly bigger than this 73 watt version, so it's a good middle ground between these two chargers. I'll leave a link to all three chargers in the pinned comment below, and you can choose which one you prefer. If you're in the market for a smartwatch to go along with your Samsung phone, you've got three great choices. The Samsung Galaxy Watch 6, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, and the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. All of these are swim-proof, can take electrocardiograms to check for atrial fibrillation, as well as take body composition measurements which show you detailed health info like body fat percentage, fat mass, skeletal muscle, body water, and more. They can also track over 90 different types of exercises, and some of them have audio guidance to keep track of your reps, and can even tell you to speed up or slow down depending on the exercise. They can continuously monitor your heart rate and stress levels, they have always on displays so they look more like a traditional watch. They support both Samsung's and Google's wallet. You could use any standard 20mm watch band to fully customize the look of your watch, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I'd go with the Watch 6 if you want something small, or the Watch 6 Classic if you want that rotating bezel to help you navigate the phone, as well as a more classic design, or I'd go with the Watch 5 Pro if you want incredible battery life in a tremendously rugged design that can withstand hardcore outdoor activities. Samsung's smart tags are not only excellent for keeping track of all your things, but thanks to the built-in button, they can also double as controllers for all of your smart devices. There are three versions to pick from, a standard smart tag, the plus version, and the brand new smart tag 2. All three tags have holes that could be used to attach them to things like keychains, bags, or pet collars, or you could simply place them inside a bag. The tags allow you to see their last known location, search for them nearby, which will give you a meter telling you how close you are to the tag, then you can make the tag ring to make it even easier to find. If the tag was last seen at a different location, like at a friend's house, you could automatically start a Google Maps navigation to drive to where the tag is. The button that I mentioned earlier can be used for a number of different things. You can set up a single or long press to arm your security system, or run any routine you set up. And if you aren't familiar with routines, and you missed my deep dive review on all that routines can do, you're missing out on one of Samsung's most powerful and useful features. So definitely check that video out after this one. Besides running routines, you can also change your home's mode, which will automatically adjust all of your smart devices accordingly. You can also send a custom notification to someone, or control one or many of your smart devices. And to be clear, the single press and long press options are independent of each other and have their own separate functions. And you can also enable a double press option to start ringing your phone if you misplace it. The Smart Tag Plus has two significant benefits over the regular Smart Tag. In my experience, when tracking the tag, I was able to get much closer to the Smart Tag Plus because it adds a physical distance measurement. Whereas the regular Smart Tag only has a bar meter, which is good enough to get you in the same room as the tag, but that's about it. The Smart Tag Plus also lets you use augmented reality with your camera to give you visual cues to help you find the tag. 
so it's up to you if the added accuracy is worth the price jump to the Smart Tag Plus. The Smart Tag 2 has the same benefits as the Smart Tag Plus, but also adds IP67 dust and water resistance, has a larger ring and longer battery life, as well as a power saving mode to extend your battery life even further. Regardless, all three options are great, and it really just depends on what your needs are and how much you want to spend. I get a lot of questions about what the best screen protectors are, so here they are. In my testing, both the Amfilm and Whitestone Dome glass screen protectors work great with the in-screen fingerprint sensors on Samsung's flagship phones. And they both come with alignment trays to make installation easier. I'll link to both in the description and pinned comment below, so choose whichever one you prefer. For phones that don't have a built-in fingerprint sensor, Whitestone's Easy Glass screen protectors have worked great for me. Speaking of your screens, if you're looking for a great microfiber cleaning cloth to clean your screens, I've been using the Magic Fiber cleaning cloths for a few years now, and they work great. I've tested a bunch of different wireless earbuds over the years, and my favorite earbuds so far are the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. These things blew me away with sound quality, volume, long-term comfort, and just the sheer number of features. In fact, these things are so feature-packed that I made a dedicated top 10 unknown features video just for them. And if you want to see that video, you can click the link in the description or the pinned comment. If you want a less expensive option that still has incredible sound quality, comfort, and a ton of features, then the original Galaxy Buds Pro were my go-to earbuds all the way up until I got the Buds 2 Pro. So these are still an incredible option at a much lower price. And Samsung also just released the Galaxy Buds FE. Now I haven't personally had a chance to test those, but those are an even less expensive option that supposedly still have some pretty good sound quality. So I'll leave a link to all three in the description and pinned comment below. If you prefer over-ear headphones, check out the Sony WH-1000XM4s or the brand new XM5s. I've been using these XM4s for a few years now and I absolutely love them. They are super comfortable, have incredible noise canceling, and the touch controls work great. You can play or pause by double tapping, increase or decrease the volume by swiping up or down, and skip forward or backwards through your tracks by swiping forward or backwards. There's also an ambient sound mode that lets you hear your surroundings, as well as a voice detect feature that automatically enables ambient sound mode when you start talking, which would be particularly useful if you had your hands full and needed to quickly talk to someone while you had your headphones on. There's even a customizable button that can be used to quickly change your sound mode or activate Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa. The inside of the left headphone has a proximity sensor to detect when you take your headphones off and it'll automatically pause your music for you. Then when you put the headphones back on, it'll start automatically playing the music again. In terms of battery life, you get about 30 hours of playback, but even when the battery dies, you can plug into the 3.5mm headphone jack on the bottom to continue listening without power. There's also support for fast charging where just 10 minutes of charging through the USB-C port will get you 5 hours of playback. The XM5s improve on these features, but have a notable trade-off of not being as portable. While these XM4s can fold into themselves and fit into a small included carrying case, the XM5s do not fold in and thus require a notably larger carrying case. I'll leave links to both in the pinned comment so you can learn more about them and see if either one is a good fit for you. If you want to stick with your favorite 3.5mm headphones, then I recommend the Ugreen 2-in-1 headphone adapter, which has a power pass-through so you can still charge your phone at fast charge speeds while using the 3.5mm headphone jack. And if you just want a straight adapter without the power pass-through, then I'd go with the JSOX adapter. And in case you're wondering, both of these adapters work with the inline play, pause, and volume buttons that come on most wired earbuds. Now let's talk about those deals. For the next couple of weeks, you guys can get 25% off any Samsung flagship phone, plus massive trading discounts, free storage upgrades, and big discounts on things like Galaxy watches, tablets, laptops, and more. You can check out this video for the details or read the details in the pinned comment down below. And now that you know what the best accessories are for your Samsung phones, you can check out this video here to see the most powerful feature on any Samsung phone or tablet. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more deep dive videos just like this. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.